Thank you. First, I want to say thank you for everyone. I'm really humbled. I, I don't know what to say. You know, I just figured I was just a, a geek that liked birds, and I did my what I thought was important, and I got all this support. It's amazing. But you know, when I started this program, the working with raptors, the first thing I tried to do was find a good veterinarian. <laughs> Believe it or not, that bird's mating with me. <laughs> I tried to find a good veterinarian. I went all over. I checked all the towns, talked to a lot of different veterinarians, and 99% of them said to me, sure, we'll help you out, but at the end of the month, you're gonna get a bill just like everyone else. And I said, okay, and that was that. So I, I walked into an office down in Deerfield, South Deerfield Veterinary Clinic. And there was this big guy standing in the, in the back, the doctor. He had hands on him like baseball mitts. And I said, this guy is never, never going to agree. So I went in and I said, introduced myself. And he said, I'm Dr. Schmidt. Yeah. And I told him what I was doing. And he said to me, you bring any bird in here that you're working with, and it's not going to cost you a penny. And for years and years and years, this guy put that for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, he retired. But anyway, uh, I run a project called Mass Bird of Prey. You know, it's a big name. A lot of people think when they come to see the birds, I'm going to have a gift shop and I'm going to have a, a petting zoo. It's not. It's not anything even close to that. It's a, it's a working facility. I rescue, rehabilitate, and release birds of prey back to the wild. And let me tell you, in today's environment, you know, all these gadgets I'm watching everybody, you know? I tell the kids in school, you're gonna have thumbs as big as baseball bats when you're my age. That's all we do. People call me on the phone and they'll say, how am I gonna get a hold of you? You don't have email. You don't, you're not on Facebook. Call me on the phone, I got a pad and a piece of paper and a pencil and I'll write it down. And it's unbelievable. But we don't realize what we're doing. You know, back in the 60s, when we were spreading toxic DDT on planet Earth, everybody thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Farmers loved it. Produced bigger crops, everything was great. Until the National Bird of America, the bald eagle started to disappear. The peregrine falcon, the osprey, the break, all the, all the birds were disappearing. And finally, Rachel Carson, in her favorite, famous book, excuse me, Silent Spring. She was the one that said, I know the culprit, it's pesticide. And the same thing is happening today, not with pesticide, but with technology, progress. Not progress, technology. Solar panels are starting to injure birds. When a duck's looking for a place to land in the evening, and that sun is glittering off a whole panel of solar panel field, they think it's a lake. All the power lines, cell phone towers, are all causing problems for wildlife. And unfortunately, we're not thinking that far ahead. And again, unfortunately, wildlife is the last thing to be considered. You know, he wanted to put a cell tower up, and the man actually came to my door, he knocked on it, he said, you want to put a, a shield? I said, what are you talking about? He said, a shield to protect you from the tower. I didn't know what he was talking about, but anyway, that's another thing. But you know, these things we're doing in the environment today are going to have an effect on, on people as well as wildlife. And it's doing a, a job today. A, a lot of the birds I've been picking up lately, and Bob will remember this, fired owls, completely blind. No head trauma, completely blind. Can't figure out what's happening. Uh, now we've got avian, avian flu. And I got an eagle in about two weeks ago, and he's got what we call stargazing. His head is upside down. Hmm. His beak is facing to the sky. And they say it's a vitamin deficiency. Can't get his head back up. So I'm finding a lot of different things happening in the environment. I want to show you a couple of things before I show the birds. This is interesting. That's a wing of a kestrel. Doesn't supposed to look like that. And for years I couldn't figure what was going on. And finally it was solved. The landfill the landfill. We put the pipes in the ground to get rid of the methane gas and they ignite. They have a set of igniter on it. 
And every so often, it ignites, the flame shoots up, and this guy is sitting on that pipe hunting mice. Mm. And they get all burned. Takes the feathers right off. Some of the things I put together, I want to show you. I'm going to put the mic down for a minute. I spent 38 years as a state conservation officer. And I put together this. It says extinction on the top. And if you look at it, all the things we're doing to wildlife. And people don't realize the illegal trafficking in wildlife and wildlife products is almost as lucrative as the narcotic deal. Unbelievable. Tiger bone, an aphrodisiac. Rhinoceros horn, same thing. Elephant tusk made into jewelry of all sorts. But you just look at this and it's pretty interesting. This right here says Russian caviar. Fish eggs. It's American paddlefish. They strip the fish of its eggs, they recan it as Russian caviar. I got a great book here. Great book. It's a kid. What does that say? She's wearing a dead bird on her head. She's wearing a dead bird on her head. <laughs> <laughs> These two women, and, and it was in Massachusetts, Mrs. Hemingway and Mrs. Hall, they were part of the Massachusetts Audubon Society. And back in the 1800s, women wore feathered hats like this. And they were outraged how they always slaughtered all those beautiful birds just so someone could plop them on the top of their head. They fought with Congress, they went right to the White House and they got a law passed. And that law is still in effect today. It states you cannot possess the feathers of protected birds unless you have a special federal license or you are a full-blooded Native American. Full-blooded Native American. These are fans made with eagle tail. Okay. Let me show you a few birds. I asked a child in school one day, give me the definition of a bird of prey. And here's what I got in response. And she wrote this down. She said, eyes on the side meant to hide. A robin, a blue jay, a dove, a Washington ain't danger. Eyes in the front, meant to hunt. Mm. And we're predators. We look straight forward. So when you look at the birds, their eyes are in front. I'm going to show the birds and talk a little about the project. And then if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. People always ask, what can I do for, for wildlife? But one thing they can do, don't use mouse poison. Don't use it. Don't use it. You can buy it at Walmart right off the shelf. That poison is designed. When that mouse eats that poison, it does something to his system. It wants to get out and get something to drink. You want to get it out of your house. And that's what happens. It gets outside. The wildlife picks it up. Owls, hawks, eagles, cats, everything else. Use house rat poison, mouse poison, big problem. Try not to use that, that stuff. Some of the birds I thought were with me, <coughs> excuse me. Incidentally, the birds I'll show you today are all non-releasable. Cannot be released back to the wild. That's why they're here with me right now. 
Let's see it. Let me look at this guy. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> when I go to the school, usually about now, one of the children always raises their hand and say, when are we going to see the birds? <laughs> <laughs> Hear that clicking? barred owls today. They're getting slaughtered on the highways. And people always ask, why are owls and hawks hunting on the highway? Very simple. What's that? Roadkill. Once again, huh? Roadkill. You know, most people think roadkill. Not true. The state plow uh, cuts the grass in the median strip, exposes the mice, pretty easy to catch. But here's the reason. We litter. We litter. <coughs> you take an apple, you drive along in your nice looking shiny car. I don't leave an apple in here, you throw it out the window. The mice get used to that, they're down there feeding on that apple or that piece of bread. The hawks and owls, they know the mice are there. Chain reaction. And they're the ones that get hit by the ants. Especially this guy, this species. What do you think? He bites. <laughs> oh, incidentally, I saw the newspaper. The kids in school are making things for, to help me with my project. I can't believe it. And I feel a surprise for them tomorrow. That's all I'll say. Does he have a name? Ah, does he have a name? It's a barred owl. <laughs> People always ask me that question. You know, I always felt it was a disservice to wildlife to go into a class or a group of intelligent people and say, this is Hootie. <laughs> it's an owl. It's a barred owl. So I don't name it. Thank you. I know you. I know this guy. You might get pooped on, so. <laughs> It won't be the first one. <laughs> if this was the bird that was going to be released back to the wild, he wouldn't be here at this facility. I keep him totally isolated, just medical attention and feeding. That's it. You know, the birds have to have a special diet. If I took this owl and fed him a steady diet of chicken or fish or hamburger, he wouldn't survive very long. You'd notice in two or three weeks, he's starting to look pretty rough. They have to form a pellet in their system. And the pellet gets rid of the feathers, fur, and bones that the animal eats. But what is really important, when the bird swallows a mouse, when he digests it, when he spits that pellet up, it keeps the digestive tract clean. So they have to have as natural a diet as possible. You know, when the, when the Federal Express comes up the house, mm -hmm. he says, I love coming here and never no longer be delivering. <laughs> <laughs> That's the barred owl. Anyone know the call of the barred owl? <laughs> Who cooks for you? <laughs> Pretty common owl. So if he's um, not releasable, is he going to just stay with you? And yeah, his he's blind in one eye. They've got soft feathers, so when they flap their wings, no sound. Mm -hmm. No sound at all. <laughs> they had a Folgers commercial and so the owl flapped away oh, while yeah. they drinking Folgers on the porch. And I said, they don't make any noise. <laughs> and they stopped running that commercial <laughs> quickly. Like, just a lot of people wrote in. Like, Good Wait thing. a minute. <laughs> okay. Largest owl in New England. Anyone know? Great horn. Great horn owl. 
Bob, you might recognize this bird. He, he took the tips of his wings off about 15 years ago. He had frostbite. And he's still with me. He's about 18 years old now. And this is a great condo. You boys and girls, anyone know why he's got tufts of feathers on the top of his head? Anyone know? They call ear tufts, but they're not for hearing. Camouflage. Watch. He'll flatten himself out against the side of a tree. <coughs> Put his ear tufts up in the air, and you boys and girls will walk right by and think it's just an old, broken branch. <laughs> you can touch this guy. Do you know it's a flat face to pick up sound? Uh, this bird has got excellent eyesight, excellent hearing. They call the great horned owl the tiger of the air because this bird will eat anything from a house cat to a cricket. <laughs> big, big uh, variety. And one of its favorite foods, believe it or not, skunks. <laughs> no one else is eating. Yes. <laughs> How far can they see? Uh, this eyesight, they say, is about three times better than a, than a human. Yeah. Well, fish are a little porcupine, too. Mm -hmm. I see someone waving over here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's nice to see children look at enjoying wildlife. I asked a class at one time. Tell, someone tell me some of the birds that they observed. And one boy said, I saw a bald eagle. I said, great, tell me about it. He said, it was on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that was the answer I got. Um, someone? Could I touch them? What's that? I did not get a turn <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Great horned owl. Largest New England owl. If you look at the male and female sitting there like this, you can always tell the male from the female by the size. The female is larger than the male. <laughs> How big do they get? The, uh, the female's maybe two or three inches tall. That's about mm. it. This bird's a real exception. Most great horned owls that I, I've worked with over the years, they have a real, they're, they're a real tough bird to work with. This guy's got a real, real good disposition. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising? <laughs> Not much of a, uh, when you look at them, that bird's about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds, that's about it. Hollow bones, yeah, real, uh, real uh, soft feathers, hollow bones. Smallest owl. You know, what's that old saying? Uh, little person syndrome? You know, a little guy always wants a big you know, Big owl just laid back. This little guy, what an attitude. Oh, my God. Small wet owl. Smallest New England owl. He's the biggest he gets. And the only one that will migrate south, this bird heads south and comes back about now just like, just like other, other birds do. 
But the flowered owl gets its name from the sound that it makes. He also makes a sound like a school, school bus backing up. <laughs> you know, I wait for someone to say about his head, say something about his Look at how far you can turn his head around. Oh, yeah. oh, can we just turn your finger and his head stays in the same place? They've got more vertebrae in their neck than, than we have. They can turn their head completely around, look over his shoulder. <laughs> that question. Were you doing this when you were a child? Yes, I was. And I can always remember my dad saying to me, why don't you go out and play baseball with the kids? Why are you always out in the woods coming home all covered with mud? <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. But another, I love to tell stories. I had a paper room. And to tell young people today that I had a paper room and I made about $3 a week, that went into the family budget. We, Dependent on that money. I was delivering my papers and I found a pigeon. Guess what I did? I threw the papers down a sewer. <laughs> I took the pigeon home. And that night, the phone kept ringing. Where's my paper? <laughs> and I learned a big lesson that night. <laughs> you never lied to your parents. <laughs> and I said, I delivered all the papers. <laughs> Not true. So to answer your question, yeah, I love birds all my life. <laughs> so what else? So what do they eat primarily? What's that? What do they eat primarily? This guy, yeah. they eat a lot of mice and a lot of insects. Yeah. What's the matter with him? He's got a bad wing. Bad wing. Yeah. Do <laughs> you remember the story about how that owl came to you? Uh, hit the side of a pickup truck. People picked it up off the highway. Their call is wonderful. What's that? Their call. Oh, the call, yeah. What's the second smallest owl? Anyone know? Screech. Screech owl. Is that a male or female? That's a male. Most common hawk in New England. All week, it's been nothing but chainsaws and wood chippers, so the birds are really, especially this guy, he didn't, didn't have a very good week. The red-tailed hawk, the most common hawk here in, in New England, and this is the one you'll see sitting along the highway uh, trying to catch mice in the median strip or feeding on litter. Red-tailed hawk. And years ago, the farmers called this bird a chicken hawk. They love to raid the chicken yard. You know, today everybody's health conscious. We don't keep chickens in coops anymore. We have free range chickens. And on behalf of all the red tail hawks, <laughs> he bites. He's a biter. He's a soaring hawk. Big broad wing spa, soaring. 
and they're molting their feathers right now, he'll get all new feathers pretty soon. Wow, that is a killer tail. <laughs> <laughs> what are the claws called? Talons. Talons. A bird girl here. <laughs> Talons. Boy. <laughs> I, hair and a hat. I apologize. He just said he's a boy, but he got long hair. Gotcha. Oh, incidentally, the great horned owl is the earliest nesting bird in New England. Uh, the females are on eggs right now. My favorite bird. Probably the prettiest of all the birds. Uh. <laughs> Was that old expression? A face only a mother could love? <laughs> because they're really adapted to the environment. They're a scavenger. That featherless head keeps them nice and clean when he's eating a, a carcass of a dead animal. Uh, a lot of things about this bird are designed for that function. Does anyone know how a turkey vulture keeps his body cool? What's that? Yeah. They pee on their legs. <laughs> you guys haven't lived until you've been kissed by a vulture. <laughs> they pee on their legs to keep their body cool. And one habit, uh, one of the habits that is really interesting, if they're frightened or a predator is close, they can't get off the ground sometimes because they ate so much food, they'll regurgitate their stomach content. They'll throw up. I've rescued a lot of turkey vultures that would do that. They regurgitate the stomach content. Another thing, most people remember when we were kids, first sign of spring was a robin. Not today, it's a turkey vulture. The robins are here all year. Turkey vulture show, it's a sign of spring. How do you tell a turkey vulture when it's flying? They fly drunk. Fly drunk. They fly with, it's called a diadro. D for vulture, straight up in the air. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Turkey vulture. So, Interesting bird. So where do they migrate to? They go down to the Carolinas, Florida, South America. The only, the only problem with the birds going to South America, a lot of the pesticides we have stored in this country, we ship it to the third world countries down in, Florida, down in South America, and the birds are picking it up down there. So what's this trend? What's that? What's the predator? There's not many, not many. Uh, sometimes the young are eaten by raccoons because what happens, the female, regur uh, the male regurgitates take the food into the nest, the birds eat it. Creates a lot of, a lot of uh, scent. Raccoons get in and uh, eat it. You know, we've got a pier nesting right up here on, uh, right across the plot of equipment in one of the old buildings there. And when I went up to Band of Chicks a couple of years ago, the, there were raccoon tracks all in that oh, attic that they never, never bothered the young. Uh, Hardly any voice on this particular species. They make a grunting sound, that's about it. Oh my gosh, it, you're right. He may not look very handsome up close. You see one flying, nothing compares to the turkey vulture. About four pounds. My grandma would always like going to the top line. I like the rock. My grandfather always thought that was so unfair. Why don't you ever give me other crows? I'm just looking for snacks too. So he's like, you don't really go out just to eat the crows. I'm a spider.
Bassus Burr. Harrogate Fell. I was just going to say, <laughs> they're a very high strung bird. They're like an athlete, all muscle. Feathers are tight to the body, long pointed wings for speed. And this is one of the birds that was affected by pesticide. And we're lucky here in the Connecticut Valley area, we've got several nesting pairs of peregrines along the, the Connecticut River. So they're coming back pretty good. You see what he's doing? He's bowing to me. That's kind of like a greeting. They're very, very nervous birds. Boys and girls, you watch a baseball game? What are some of the players doing to their face? Uh, they put black lines yeah, below it so the spotlights don't. Yeah, same thing. Got the black under his eye. I mean, Clocked at about 200 miles an hour. So I always say the fastest bird is probably the fastest living thing on planet Earth. Mm. It's a very good falcon. What a bird. As I said, always exercising, constantly. Is that the average size of one? Yeah, just a male called a tassel, which means one third smaller. Females are a little bigger, but the male's about average size. What's the matter with him? He's got a bad eye. Feathers are so pretty. What's that? You want to take him over there for the kids? Yeah. <laughs> I brought, a, uh, I brought a golden eagle in to show you. Uh, I'm not going to walk around her. She's just too, too heavy. Yeah. Uh, so I'll stand here and hopefully get a good close look at it. wing under my chin. Uh, this bird hit a power line and uh, lost the use of that wing. And unfortunately, it was on the ground for several weeks, and that wing started to heal on its own. So it, it was left in that, in that condition. But the bird gets its name from that beautiful color in the back of its head, the golden color. You know, years ago, I'm talking a couple of hundred years ago, this bird was a native species in New England, but it was eradicated many years ago. And the only nesting pairs that are close up and way up in northern Maine into Canada and down in Tennessee, they're starting to reintroduce them down in the Tennessee area, try to get them back. Mm -hmm. That chirping song you, you hear making, that's kind of a springtime. He gets, he gets very vocal. And he'll, he'll make that sound all, all day. How long so have you The golden eagle. Tom, good guy. Uh, they used to be. Uh, sometimes in the fall, when they're migrating 
That's what happened to this bird. They, they'll come through New England from Canada. How long have you had? About five years, five or six years. This bird was found up in Gardner on a power line. Are they the biggest uh, raptor in North America? Uh, the, the golden and the bald eagle are about the same. Uh, but when you look at a bald eagle, he's like an owl, very fluffy feathering. When a gold eagle is more like a peregrine falcon, tight to the body. So if you look at them both together, one looks bigger than the other. And how much do they weigh? That bird's about nine pounds, you know, eight or nine pounds now. Do you have a question? <laughs> nah, it's pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. <laughs> I ran out of birds. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll try to answer some for you. Yes? You're not gentle to the hand like that right away. It takes, a, it takes a lot of time. You know, people always ask me, are they smart? Absolutely. They recognize me by my voice, by my, my mannerisms. To give you an example, I went to a class a month or so ago. The teacher said, you have to wear a mask. I said, fine. I put a mask on, and while I was standing there with a vulture on my hand, I knew I had a problem. Because he kept looking at me. He kept looking at me. And basically, I could think, he was thinking, who the heck is this guy holding me? <laughs> he bit me in the nose. <laughs> the blue mask I had on started to turn red. <laughs> and the teacher was going like this to me, and I didn't know what she meant. So he brought me a towel and he, he bit me in the nose. So he recognized my features and my voice. But they, they are very intelligent. As I said before, the only birds I handle are birds that would be used for educational programs. But I spent a lot of time with them. A lot of time. And one thing I found over the years, boy, you have to have a real understanding wife, very understanding family, to put up with some of the stuff that my wife used to put up with. You know? uh, so, so how many birds total do you have at the facility? There's 65 there right now. I've got five bald eagles there right now. But I, I had a bird drop off today, right here today at this facility. But uh, it's, a, it's a project I, I, I never intended it to get this big. But uh, you know, it's a passion. And people always say to me, it's great what you do for the birds. You know what I tell them back? It's great what the birds do for me. Yeah. I enjoy it.